and welcome to Bank of Ireland's latest Brexit update. I'm Joe Oliver. I'm here with Head of FX Strategy and Trading, Lee Evans, and Breen Evans, Head of Manufacturing for Business Banking. Today, we're going to give a short roundup of what's happening in the world of Brexit, along with how that is impacting the manufacturing sector in Ireland and our customers. I'll start with you, Lee. Um, what's happening in the world of Brexit, and how's that impacting on the currency markets? Yeah, sure, Joe. I suppose if we take, a, take us back to last week, uh, we've seen a, a bit of a strengthening in the pound. It's 5% stronger versus the euro since the highs in December, the highs in euro sterling, which are above 90p. It got down to around 86p last week. So one of the things we've been talking to customers about this year is, is to expect more volatility in the exchange rate. 2018 was actually the smallest trading range uh, since 2006. And actually, we're not even at the end of January yet. And we've already seen a bigger trading range in euro sterling uh, in 2019 than we did for the entire of 2018. So we hit new 18-month lows in euro sterling uh, last week. Um, but this week has seen a little bit of a, of a different take. We had the votes and the amendments uh, in the UK Parliament. Uh, there was three main amendments that, that took the focus of currency markets. Uh, the Spellman Amendment, which, which is uh, seen as largely symbolic, uh, although it does show that the UK Parliament uh, is slightly in favour of, uh, of avoiding a no-deal scenario. Uh, we saw the Brady Amendment, which was backed by uh, Theresa May and the government, um, although the EU have shown no uh, inclination into, into accepting uh, the, the terms put forward by the Brady Amendment. And then the final one, which took most of the uh, uh, focus, was the Cooper Amendment, which actually failed to pass, which would put something tangible in place to avoid a no-deal Brexit. So Euro sterling is trading about 87, just over 87p, 87.50, um, which is back towards the middle of the range. Uh, one of the things, again, we've been trying to highlight is the two-sided nature of the risks. So for a couple of years now, we've been very focused on the downside for sterling and the negative implications of Brexit. And what we're trying to say to customers is this is two-sided now. There are risks in both directions. Um, and, and to be wary of that and mindful for that for your business. So still a lot of uncertainty out there, Lee. Absolutely, yeah. Breen, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, with your years of experience in the manufacturing sector, uh, what do you see as the key points for, for manufacturing uh, industry to watch in this time of uncertainty? Um, in the last two and a half years since the vote uh, uh, from the UK to leave the EU, I've visited over 200 companies. Um, we've run many events and talked to a lot of stakeholders in the manufacturing sector. So we have uh, gathered a lot of insights into the challenges. The first one Lee has already talked about is foreign exchange management and having a strategy on that. P primarily then after that it comes down to understanding the exposure and being able to quantify that exposure and having an investment plan to support an action plan for uh, mitigating any of the risks in Brexit. So the exchange rate management have a policy. Then we would say route to market direct and indirect route to market. You would have supply chain, so from the UK or through the UK in here for raw materials. Understand those, then decide what the risks are. So if we have a, a, a hard border and we have a no deal Brexit, we, will have, we would assume we will have WTO tariffs. If we have the WTO tariffs, um, then it's what are the tariff impacts and how do they affect uh, the company and the product. For some companies, the bigger challenge is the non uh, tariff impact, so regulatory, time at border, um, standards, um, regulation, so they'd be, they'd be some of the challenges that they will have to deal with. Then, so that's on the risk side, you also have the opportunity side. Um, we import a lot of uh, product from the UK um, and we have opportunity to displace that in the Irish market. So, and then you have opening up new markets in Europe then underpin all of that with cash flow based on well thought out projections and then an investment plan to support that. Where do you invest? Efficiency, new product development, new market development, new supply chain um, uh, approval and certification. So really it is foreign exchange management, it's uh, exposure and um, quantification of that exposure, it's an investment plan and um, they're, they're the challenges that we see for most of our customers. So planning is key. Planning is key, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so are there any subsectors in, in the manufacturing industry that are particularly exposed at the moment? 
Yeah, it, well, it depends whether we have a, a deal or a no deal Brexit. So if we assume that we have a no deal Brexit, you would say companies that have products with short shelf life, low margins, products that are easy to replicate, such as food processing, they would be exposed. Um, time at border, etc., would affect those. Costs of putting refrigeration in place at the borders um, uh, and in the supply chains uh, would be an impact. And then you would have, which is not so obvious, but like the automotive industry and the suppliers from Ireland into the automotive industry in the UK, um, we have just-in-time lean pull systems in the supply chain, and you have quick response time for those, res uh, those supply chains. So if they are affected by time at border and tariffs and customs and checks, um, they would be affected as well. If we end up with a deal, we'd have some sort of customs harmonization, we'd have to assume. So if we get that, then we would say that it's business as usual and be less specific subsector uh, effects. To stay on the same vein, uh, are there any upsides? Are there any areas that might experience an opportunity in this? Yeah, there, there, there are, because um, if you look at the parliamentary report from August 1st in the UK Parliament, they documented for 2017 21.3 billion of goods exports, uh, services aside, of goods exports to Ireland. So that's higher by about 5 billion to the Irish exports of goods into the UK. So if they're affected by tariffs um, coming into the UK, then we have an opportunity to dis displace those products in here. So the opportunity for the companies is to cozy up to the customers of their UK competitors, understand what the implications might be and see where the opportunities are. If we have a deal Brexit, then it's um, business as usual and you're competing on the, on the normal levels. But you would have Subsectors and companies that have high tech products, for example, that are market agnostic, they're able to transfer anywhere um, and, and able to uh, be relevant in any market. They're not dependent on taste, such as food. So they would be pretty independent of the, uh, of the deal or no deal. It's good to see two sides of the coin. Uh, Lee, how is the bank uh, protecting its customers or advising its customers in this time? Yeah, sure. I, I think in a number of ways, to be honest. Uh, Breen mentioned that the, the foreign exchange planning is, is one of the big challenges for the manufacturing sector. Uh, first and foremost, I'd say we're supporting our customers through a dedicated team of dealers like yourself, Joe, who, who are there to talk and, and up to speed on what's going on uh, specifically around Brexit. We've also put a couple of other things in place. We have the Brexit portal, which gives uh, various information and updates. Uh, and we also have increased the unsecured FX fund from 20 million to 50 million. Um, so the bank is there to support its customers and um, will continue to, be, uh, to do so. So I would just say to customers to come and talk to us. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're here to help and, um, and yes, uh, uh, foreign exchange planning is, is going to be uncertain uh, with, with Brexit for the, for the months ahead. But uh, try and take that risk out of your business and we're consistent with that message. That's great. Thanks for that, Lee. Um, thanks for your time today and Breen, thanks for your time. Um, we've certainly seen a, an uplift in customers approaching the desk. Uh, different moves in the rates have seen an uplift in deals coming over, uh, especially last week when sterling strengthened. We certainly saw a lot more forward contracts being booked, so it's, it's, it's certainly something that uh, is being moved by the markets as the opportunity arises. Um, thank you for your time today. Bank of Ireland is here to support our customers. Uh, please log on to our new Brexit hub. and contact your relationship manager or feel free to call us at any stage if you want to discuss any of your needs. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe.